A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet we do not speak a wisdom to those who are mature, but not a, yet we do speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. This God revealed to us through the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's request. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. Commit to the Lord your way. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light. Bright as the noonday shall be your vindication. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The mouth of the just tells of wisdom, and his tongue utters what is right. The law of his God is in his heart, and his steps do not falter. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you, wishing to construct a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost? to see if there is enough for its completion. Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlooker should laugh at him and say, this one began to build, but did not have the resources to finish. Or, what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for terms of peace. In the same way, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. St. John, of course, is famous for his poem and then he, uh, the unpacking of that poem in a, a work of mystical theology which is known as the Dark Night of the Soul. And that poem actually comes out of his own lived experience of months of being kept 
a prisoner and being beaten on a regular basis by fellow Carmelites who did not like the way John was attempting to reform the order. His escape is really narrated in that poem in many ways. But you look at what is called a dark night of the soul, okay? And how does the dark night of the soul differ from the sense of abandonment that people also experience? Well, subjectively, there's no difference. Okay, subjectively, that sense of emptiness, isolation, is the same. Objectively, attitude becomes the difference, where in the second case, you say, that's it, I'm alone, that's the end of it, period. In the first case, you say, this is how I feel, I choose to accept and to choose to make a response to God regardless. And so that objective difference is what really marks the difference between the dark night of the soul and just despair. Now, are there other famous people who have gone through that kind of dark night? Yes. But uh, maybe the most important one to mention is Jesus Christ on the cross. And he had to have that full experience of abandonment, otherwise he didn't taste every temptation that we have and yet not sin. And so when he can cry out in the beginning, my God, why have you abandoned me? And nevertheless, at the end, say, into your hands I commend my spirit. You can see the act of trust, regardless of the sensation that was going on in him. All of us have that kind of sense. All of us have that kind of sense at one time or another. And there is a passage that is supposedly written on a wall somewhere, in a basement somewhere. I've seen it referred to several times. Uh, most recently in somewhere in a basement, a bomb shelter or something in Cologne in Germany. And the text is this, I believe in the sun even when it is not shining. I believe in love even when there is no one there. I believe in God even when he is silent. And supposedly written by a Jewish person uh, in the context of the Holocaust. That is a dark night and an affirmation of faith. St. John it gives us the opportunity of examining our own hearts to see, as he says in the Office of Readings excerpt that we had today, that we have to, if we want to get to the greatness of what St. Paul wrote about here with the great wisdom and riches of God, you've got to go through the thicket of suffering and you've got to go through the doorway of the cross. How willing and able are we to make a couple of steps toward that thicket and toward that gateway today? We celebrate in Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, someone who went utterly and absolutely through that thicket and through that gate and found resurrection and glory at the end, can we follow? Let us stand and pray.